Well, howdy diddly dandy there, charms tis I, captain of the Steves, and I got myself a lovely cup of tea, and I'm going to be deep diving into a video that's been put out by Dreamlit Studios for their new game, Towers of Ashkaba. Go cool. Anyway, let's uh, just jump on over, shall we? And I'll hit play on this video. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to just talk over this. This is a 30 minute video and I'm going to kind of try to summarize exactly what is going on with all of this. So Dreamlit Studios and Dreamlit Entertainment are making a game called Towers of As Agaspa. Now Towers of Agaspa is a bit of a medley of all sorts of games or even movies. Now they did make Harken, which was a previous game by them, which was a freaking beautiful game considering it was quite a small team that put this together so if you're a fan of Hawken or Harkin however you want to pronounce it I'm hoping that you're going to be pretty interested in this so Towers of Agaspa takes inspiration from Nosoka if that's how you pronounce it the Valley of the Wind which is like a little bit like Dune but a cartoon version Shadow of the Colossus you know that game where you can climb all over giant monsters and stuff like that you can climb all over the monsters in this too and Minecraft you know for the old crafting sort of aspect but that was just the original inspiration now they did sort of build on that massively I mean considering that this is a Studio Ghibli type film there's one here they actually approached Studio Ghibli and Studio Ghibli helped them with quite a lot of their texture designs. They actually went over to Japan, met the Studio Ghibli guys and put something together. Anyway, so skipping on a little bit further. I mean, I, I've only watched this movie once when I was a kid, so... But you are going to see quite a lot of these sort of windmilly type things, villages that look fairly similar, creatures that look similar, and sort of you know, costume designs and gliders and all sorts of stuff inside of this game. Now, they also liked it to be a little bit dark, hence this looking thing. I mean, it's quite whimsical but it's also quite dark at the same sort of time. And I think these characters look a little bit, you know, Peter Pan-esque. I mean, they've done away with all these sort of finials and things like that now, which is a real shame because I really like this original co character design. I think I quite like that more than what they've actually gone with. What they've gone with is more tribal type, type looking, more like Lost Boys from Peter Pan. But, you know, let's just skip this on a little bit further. So more recent sort of transitions when it comes to comparisons is Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like in Zelda, you can pretty much traverse a landscape, go wherever you like. Animal Crossing, where it comes to cozy farming and the relaxation element, it's got that in there too. So there's a real medley going on here. So if any of these things have spiked your interest or things that are close to your heart, you're probably going to like Towers of Agaspa. So skipping on just a little bit further until we actually get into there. I mean, I don't know either of these two references, so I can't really talk to it, to be fair. But there's quite a lot of forestry creatures that are going to be bringing into this. Anyway, we'll get to the actual footage in a moment. But you can see that uh, there's, there's a little section here where they show about the texture designs and how they've brought those in from Studio Ghibli. And so there we go. That's the actual painting of the textures. Oh, it's, oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be such a beautiful game. Anyway, let's skip on over to when the actual footage starts. So when it comes to Towers of Gasper, you're probably wondering, well, what is the actual game itself? What's the premise? You start off washed up on the shores of an island. Every player has the same island. OK, it's not procedurally generated, but where you choose to build your civilization is completely your choice. And depending on where you build your civilization, changes up the actual island's design and look, look at this you can even sort of traverse the oceans inside of this game too there's swimming mechanics there's also fishing which we'll cover off in a moment anyway i'm just going to drink a little bit of this massive arid landscapes as well there's also there's quite a few different biomes so there's this one which is kind of like the tropical then there's arid which are the main two but then there's also a sort of withered world, which we'll get to in a moment. So this is the engine that they're using. They're just talking here about how they've implemented rumble and feedback and all that sort of lovely good stuff inside of the PlayStation joypads. And they've tried to match the rumbles to the actual sound waves inside of the game, which I think is pretty darn sweet. So here we go. You're washed up on the actual um, island itself and you're part of the Shimu tribe. They've actually got 
sort of like ambient sound so depending on where you look the sound will change and things like that so that's pretty darn cool there you go i'll just i'll just unmute it for a second speaker the speaker come alive in adobe atmos setup but in just standard 4.1 7.1 or even in atmos emulation the places where we've used ambisonics will create a superior audio experience as the camera pans around the 3d space like in the shoreline which uses ambisonic audio as you move the camera around, up and down, the sound of the ebbing and flowing water moves around naturally and sounds amazing, as opposed to just bouncing from speaker to speaker. Something that I say isn't so amazing there, if we just show that same bit of footage again, is look at the shadow. The shadow gets cast up on the actual... Yeah, gets cast on everything. The shadows inside of this seem to be a little bit iffy but he has actually suggested that inside of this early access is early access for a lot of reasons and they want to add in a lot of sort of polish as we go along and it's an early access to get feedback from the community and then build on that so you're washed up you've got become part of the shimu tribe and it's the first point of call is to try to explore pick up bits and bobs but the main objective is to find where you're going to put down your first camp and the actual landscape itself, you can see here, is rather barren. It's completely empty, to be fair. So you can pick up the odd sticks, the odd stones, and the odd few resources. But for you to actually get resources and to actually start building your little metropolis, you need to plant this massive, great, big seed. And once you've planted the seed, it's going to grow this like eternal tree type thing you know like the tree of mana from secret of mana or something is probably the best way i could explain this but when you put it down depending on where you've chosen that sort of procedurally generates the creatures you're going to see so if you do go and visit your friend's island and they've built somewhere slightly different to you they're going to have slightly different creatures than you which i think is a lovely idea and that affects a lot of things that we get into later as we go through this video but look at this, this is like a, a bustling metropolis. Here's a lot of the actual creatures that you can see in, in this person's build. Now, when it comes to the actual creatures themselves, you can catalogue them, scan them, get to learn about them and learn about your environment. Or you can choose to actually hunt them and shoot them for food and resources. But if you are going to kill all the creatures, it doesn't bode too well. You're best to feed them, farm them, and maybe kill some of the predatory ones, the ones that attack you. But mainly it's to be an ecosystem that you live with rather than one that you set up and then destroy. I mean, that option is there for you. You can do that if you really want to. But picking your first area is is paramount to how you're going to progress through. Now, this map itself... You can walk from A to B, or from one end to the other, in about 30 minutes in real time. And inside of that, you're going to see many points of interest, and you're going to see a few very different types of biome. And here you go, the, the inspiration of Shadow of the Colossus, you can climb pretty much anything in this game. Now, something that the developer says as he is talking, is some of these things that you're climbing up, you know, don't expect it to be completely seamless and bug-free experience. At times, you might get the odd camera angle, the odd sort of uh, bug, but they're working on that you know this is early access that it's going into basically this this project is very ambitious in what they're trying to deliver in and the budget they have doesn't match their ambition so putting it into early access people that like the idea of this are helping back and fund the project to grow and they're hoping that they get enough people on board to grow this game bigger than it is now i mean it works it's it's nice but just don't go in expecting a triple a experience and that's reflected in the price right now you can pick this up for about 29.99 in uk money but it looks pretty darn freaking nice you know what i'll shut up for a moment drink some tea and i'll let you listen to him for a moment uh, placing fertilizer to speed up the growth uh, helping the wounded creatures that lives there uh, of course you can also hunt or you can be kind and uh, feed the animal. Um, they all have their own preference of food. You can be hunting or you can be nurturing. It's all player choices. Uh, there's a bit of a balancing act of uh, how much you should be growing versus hunting um, because we don't really necessarily punish you. Like uh, it's, it's, the game is similar to Animal Crossing where you don't regress, um, but you do progress slower if you over hunting so it's best to sort of uh, 
hunting and harvesting in moderation. It takes time for the plants and trees and the animal life to uh, respawn and regrow. Uh, so if you do it in a balanced way, then you will progress the game in a much more optimal manner. And the original inspiration for this is uh, I watched a documentary about how people were able to find water in the desert by sort of uh, they tied up a monkey and they feed it salt to the super thirsty. And you know, once they let the monkey go, it, it runs to the, the water hole, right? So it's that sort of uh, elder's knowledge of the land. And um, I, I think it would be very fun to do that in this fantasy world. Um, so, so it's not just like breaking rock or um, cutting down trees, which we do have, um, but we definitely have a lot of more interesting and unique variety of uh, player actions like climbing on a creature's back to harvest something from it or you come up to a uh, wounded creature in the forest and you help um, to heal it and then it will give a reward so random quests like that or just relaxing activities like fishing but even um, fishing our game is not just a typical fishing rod but we do uh, we have bow fishing it's actually one of my favorite activities to do in the game. It's quite relaxing just to uh, stand and look down the water and really uh, keep a focus on a certain fish and using our tether bow, you can fire at it and yank it out of the water. Uh, and it's quite fun to uh, have this experience with friends because uh, you could be the one kind of aiming down and your friend could be the one swimming in the lake to lure the fish to a certain direction. Like and of that. course, the fish that you caught are used in recipes, cooking, potions, but you can also use it as a feed to other animals um, and it makes them happy when they uh, get a certain type of food that they like. And catching fish also unlocks um, them in your, we call it Shimu decks, uh, pretty much a roller decks. <laughs> Shimu decks. And we have over right. 70 different type of fish. Okay. And as I mentioned, um, the animals doesn't exist in the first place, so as you grow these ecosystem, um, the fish will be replenished in the lake body nearby. So if your friend um, pretty much restores a certain eco or grow a certain ecosystem in a different place than you do, then the type of fish that lives there is different than your island. This encourages trading, you know, uh, friends visiting each other's islands. We want to encourage that sort of cooperation and PvE gameplay. And that's just fishing. We have many other activities that player can do in ecosystem. And similar to Zelda Breath of the Wild, you can pretty much climb anywhere. So many of the trees that you grow, uh, you can climb on them. They're quite fun. Um, they all have sort of like very interesting shapes and they bear fruit sometimes. They, they, uh, they give you seeds to grow more plants and trees. So yeah, we definitely encourage that sort of freeform jungle gym you're sort of like a little monkey, you know, climbing around these vast, giant trees. So it's, um, it's pretty fun. And it's definitely prone to a lot of uh, bugs and errors and, you know, uh, very difficult technical challenges. But we think it's worth it. Um, and we're going to keep improving it in the DLC. And the longer and more effort you put into an ecosystem, uh, the colossal trees and all the life around it, the larger the footprints it will be over time. So as the trees get the colossal trees get taller and taller. Um, there will be more variety, and the creature that spawns goes from tiny little rabbits, you know, to mid-sized uh, hairlope, um, to the very epic creatures like the high walker that um, we show in the previous trailer. And from the three unique ecosystem, we have well over 40 creatures for players to uh, lure and spawn into the world. So over 40 land-based creatures, then all the fish, which I think you said there was at least 50. So that's quite a lot of creatures when you come to think of it. That's close to 100 different types of fauna inside of this game. Now for me, looking at this, I kind of see some sort of connections to the likes of Light No Fire by Hello Games, which is another title that I'm really looking forward to, although we've only seen one trailer so far. Now this launches next Tuesday, 
next Tuesday this comes out so what's that the 19th of November the 19th of November at 5 p.m. UK time which means it will be out in time for me to do my live stream and I'll be doing a first hour impressions video of this so if you do like the look of this make sure you hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you next Tuesday for this yeah anyway so there's also town building so you can choose what sort of town you want to build do you want it to be to put geology and look into sort of stone milling and all that sort of stuff do you want it to be in farming and just do agriculture now if you've done one type of farm and your friend's done another type of farm you can actually do trades with them and things like that so there's all sorts going on there i mean this one looks to be quite mixed there's even like some sort of hedge maze going on down there pretty darn freaking lovely so there's a lot to be done when it comes to actual town building a lot of these are prefabs though it's not like you're going to be building out wall by wall if you like the base building in no man's sky that's not this this is more like i don't know dark cloud or something like that where you've got prefab buildings but you've got free reign on where you want to place them anyway i'll, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about the base building stone mill etc and some are um crafting station other are converting station pretty much dress as buildings so there's a bit of a decoration aspect to town building as well as you place and arrange these various buildings for your various towns it should feels like you sort of build out your uh, dream fantasy towns and villages and just like the colossal trees and the ecosystem the locations of where you built these are just completely up to you so we hope that when players visit each other's island they can see completely different arrangements and different creativities between their choices so from the vast variety of um, natural items and resources that you gain from the land and from your ecosystem from the creatures you hunt and fish and the seeds and fruits they get feed into the town crafting and converting chain but the towns between themselves uh, there's three different types there's a citadel there is the farming town and then there is the mining town and they cross pollinate with each other as well you know kind of similar to a traditional um, civilization game for example like a simplified version of that um, so i hope that players will focus on different villages types and so they can help each other when they visit each other's island right so one could be more focused on the farming and another more on the mining and then they can trade the resources with each other we also have a simplify merchant system uh, that we're hoping to expand in the dlc but for now there is ways to sort of earn gold through uh, selling these items or converting these items scrapping them I like the fact that they're already talking about DLC and this is not just, you know, put it out there into early access, grab people's money and then do a run with it. This is a labor of love. Now, he started conceptualizing, drawing this back in 2009 and then they actually picked up and started working on this and putting it into game or engine around 2017 and it's taken from 2017 to now to become what it is that you see right here and it's not finished this is not finished by a long chalk so they want those on early access to jump onto the discord and the discord's quite a, a, a lively place i'm on there and uh, people are talking already about what they're hoping to see inside of the game and getting excited over these trailers myself included now this is probably what the fourth video i've done on towers of Agas agasba i might have to put together a playlist for this so you can see all of my agasba videos if you want to see that i'll try to remember to put a link up here if not it'd be at the very end of this video i put up a, an end card now if you do want to hear everything that this developer has to say on this video he talks for a good half an hour or so I'll put a link to the original video inside of the video description, so be sure to go and hit that up. So what I quite like about this building method is as soon as you want to put it down, there's no sort of timer bar and there's no dunk, 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 why it builds. It's just boom, there it is inside of the world. I kind of like games like that. I mean, if you are to do resource gathering, fine, but then to have all the building element take time too is usually a bit of a time drag that I don't overly appreciate. So seeing it just appear there, I, I know it's not as lifelike as something like, say, Nightingale or something like that, but this is, this is beautiful. 
I think this looks freaking fantastic. I love the art style. To me, this has got notes of Lost, the, the, um, the Lost Boys from Peter Pan and also Never Ending Story, the film. Yeah, those two sort of splurge. This kind of looks like that. I mean, look, there's a giant air whale there. It's skeleton just sitting about there. So this is more about the exploration side of the actual game itself. Now, the island, like I mentioned, it's about 30 minutes to walk across it. But here you go. I'll let him tell you a bit more about the exploration side. And this is the withered. Where a player cannot build or grow anything. And it's our way of gating the player um, early on. Because one of the most challenging aspects of designing towers is if the world is kind of empty at the beginning, like a blank canvas, it could be very boring. So the player creates the fun, you know, the player creates the ecosystem and built the town. And only from that point on, um, there's a lot more complexity and interesting choices for the player. So the Witherland allows us to have um, combat fun right from the start. 70% of the island initially is covered by the Witherland. Wow. And the player will have to unlock um, or restore these withered land into that cool. the basic biome of the land, which is uh, temperate, tropical, and arid. And from those, you can build uh, the ecosystems. So there's three main the biomes. And each of these withered land regions or biomes um, that you have to unlock, it gets progressively harder um, and more challenging. The enemies get more dangerous. The, the items that require for you to uh, restore the Witherland regions gets more difficult to obtain. So the player will unlock the easier Witherland first, you know, build the ecosystem uh, once they restore the land, and then they can build their towns and then get the crafting, the weapons, the potions and thing, and ready for the next difficult Wither regions to unlock. That's the basic loop. Pretty much um, uncover wither gland, create your blank canvas, grow ecosystem, grow the town, and get stronger, and then go for the next wither region to unlock. And you restore wither region, not just through combat, but by um, completing quests and fill orders for restoring various shrines, ancient shrines, uh, which leads into the next uh, part of this presentation is the lore and the discovery and i um working in films i realized video games actually is a very difficult vehicle to tell stories it's because you can have a very complicated dramatic story you know saving somebody have there's a uh, urgency to complete a quest in a linear game for example and then people just go off and they go fishing you know that's me. so <laughs> it's um you can be saying something very dramatic on a character and then i'll be climbing the walls or the statues around them in assassin's creed for example mm -hmm. so it's the gameplay and the stories are not congruent so some of my favorite stories and games are actually stories that are from the past that the player now discover right because you can do it through more gameplay mechanics like um archaeology, relic discovery. You can find um, pieces of history, I think, and then that sort of story you sort of create in your head about what happens in the past and still keep it mysterious and a bit unknown. You know, I, I like players to use their imagination and kind of make up their own lore of what happened. So they get like only a piece of the story. And they do that through just traversing the vast land, you know, uh, on ruin site, kind of, um, investigate uh, various hints and piece it together slowly um, of what happened to the Shimu people and why they have left. Yeah, I love that. That's a little bit like No Man's Sky and the lore of No Man's Sky. I mean, yes, I do wish that they would tie up some loose ends and actually clarify a few things, but maybe that will happen in this as we get DLC. But I'm loving the vibe, I'm loving the ambience of this, and I'm liking the actual premise that you're trying to push back the withered, bring back the world into a sense of, you know, a metropolis and paradise for the Shimu tribe. I really like the look of this. Now, being that the world map is like, what, 30 minutes across and 70% of it is covered in the withered, I kind of feel that maybe there might be a certain shelf life for this. 
and we might be heavily relying on DLC as time comes. I really like the look of some of these additional characters that we're going to see. Some of them look really quite cool. Colkin <laughs> sounds a little bit like Home Alone. And this guy looks like he's straight out of Home Alone, doesn't it? Kevin! <laughs> but yeah. The actual language that they talk is sort of like uh, gibber, like gibberish, but then they put up the uh, the actual subtitles underneath for you anyway. And the characters in this look beautiful. The world looks beautiful. This looks very sort of whimsical and magical. Now I have noticed the odd frame drop, the odd frame skip. Now some of the footage at the start was on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now he mentions that he's playing this on a 4080 graphics card, which is a pretty hefty graphics card, and we're still seeing these odd frame skips every now and again. The distance draw is freaking beautiful though. But yeah, they are hoping to put a lot more polish in. So if you are seeing a little bit of poor optimization in this, I'm also seeing that as well. It has made me feel a bit nervous watching this, but I think the beauty of the game sort of circumvents that nervousness that I have, and I'm super excited for this. Something not encouraged in most of these survival games where it's all about hoarding. And I look forward to share more about it in another video, because I think it is one of the more uh, unique and novel aspects of towers as well. Just like our creative harvesting or our ecosystem buildings. So a uh, last bit I want to touch on is just our uh, multiplayer and our social aspect of the game uh, obviously it's a pve game and we want to encourage players to work together but it's not a live ops sort of game um, not a dedicated server it's more similar to animal crossing where every player have their own island and then you can have uh, four visitors to come and visit and enjoy and trade and just sort of check out um, the other players creations a little bit no, like no man's sky uh, Players will have, take on different choices and they go deeper on certain system which allows them to be more unique in that aspect and be more useful to another player that focus on a different branch. And my hope was if we balance all this correctly, um, sometime you might even see a creature you have never seen on your island because you haven't gone that far down that other path of ecosystem building. And as we add more and more content to DLC, we hope this diversify and make uh, more richness in differences between the player choices and what they actually create their islands to be. Okay, so why early access? Uh, as you can tell so far, the game is quite ambitious and our budget is fractional of uh, what it should be for this type of game. It took us a while to get here. Uh, as I mentioned, this idea was seeded back in 2009, um, you know, and I started prototyping it in 2017. And it takes the uh, prototypes, the trailer, the fundraising, the team building. I think we're pretty much uh, rock and roll around four, three, four years ago. Many game system, content, the game being open world, sandbox, multiplayer, with a modest budget for its ambition. I expect um, on launch, early access, it would have inconsistent of quality uh, in some aspects, bugs, uh, imbalances. There's so much variety of uh, system and content that uh, we couldn't go very deep on them. So we hope to improve all of that uh, with the community over time. You know, fixing the frustration points and developing the game alongside with our audience. We're very grateful for the support so far over the years. Uh, we thought people would just pretty much forget about us, but there was a lot of people been waiting and they've been happy to see all the trailers come out recently. Our Discord is very lively, so we hope you join in. So even though I've been um, working on this for seven years now, uh, it feels like it's the beginning. We are all very excited and nervous about the launch. I think the team is working extremely hard in the next few weeks. And we hope you give us a chance and check out the game. And if budget limitation wasn't an issue, I would have loved to just come out as a 1.0 game and not early access. But the nature of an ambitious game with a very limited budget means um, I think early access is the best route for us. 
and for the community as well, I think, because uh, we'll get to develop the games alongside with each other. Yeah, be part of the Thank journey. Thank you for your time, and uh, I hope to visit your island one day and see what you created. Awesome. So the way that he even says about, you know, I hope I can come and visit your island one day. That's the sort of thing that Sean of the Murrays said with No Man's Sky. I can't wait to see what people discover out there inside of the world. They can't wait to see what the players do inside of their sandbox. And this is a beautiful sandbox of a game. And also like, you know, with No Man's Sky, I used to, I make ideas videos and they're quite welcome. I mean, I've had Hello Games sponsor me in the past saying that they love my videos. I'm hoping to do the same sort of thing with this. And I think this could be a secondary game to my channel. As long as I like it and there's not too much of a grind and it doesn't feel like a second job, I can see this becoming a common feature on my channel. No Man's Sky, Towers of Agasba, and then when it drops, Light No Fire. And I'm hoping they will be the free staples of my channel. And in between, you know, I often pick up games that I quite like the look of, games that are a bit fun. At the moment, I'm playing Helldivers 2. Why there's not too much to do inside of No Man's Sky, Helldivers 2 is great, but I also want to pick up Monster Hunter Wilds. I was part of the beta on that. Freaking awesome, that. So there might be four games, actually, on my channel. You know, there might be No Man's Sky, Towers of Agasba, Monster Hunter Wilds, and Light No Fire when it drops. Now, three of those are fantasy, monstery type games, and the only one that's sci-fi is No Man's Sky. So I might, just to try and keep the balance, I might continue doing a bit of Helldivers if I can get a chance. So that's a whole handful of games. That's five games that I'm hopefully going to be bringing to my channel and doing at regular intervals. But then I also want to do the vlogs and the Captain Steve Talks videos. So if you haven't come across vlogs, I usually do them at weekends. So at the weekends, me and my partner Ivy would go out and I share some of my real life -y type stuff. I even do some 3D printing. I've got a little um, short circuit robot. Might hold him up as I'm dancing at the end so you can see him. But yeah, I've got a lot of hobbies, a lot of interests. So I try to deliver those in vlogs. And then I do talks videos, sometimes world events. Very rare that I do anything that might be political. And it's usually stuff that's to do with like cryptids and um, strangeness inside of the, real, the world, like ghosties or, or um, aliens, UFO sightings, anything that I'm on the fence on and I want your opinion. Is this real or is it fake? I usually hit those up too. So yeah, I've got a whole real or fake playlist if that sounds more your cup of tea. But anyway, I'm hoping that that's given you enough to come in and uh, check out my channel. This is coming to my channel as of Tuesday next week. It drops at 5 p.m. UK time. I usually go live at around 6 p.m. So I give it time to download and for me to get ready and get, get all set up. 6 p.m. next Tuesday, I'll be doing my first impressions video of this live. It might go early. I might put it live at half past five, depending on how quickly this downloads or whether it pre-installs or whatever. So just keep an eye out. Make sure you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss the start. Anyway, salute to Mondo, people. I can't wait for next Tuesday to roll around and I'll see you then. Goodbye, goodbye and goodbye again.